Yes, hello. Um, I'm John Burgess. I'm one of the local Crown Court judges. Lovely. And I'm Jess. I work for the National Justice Museum. So we took some of your questions from Twitter and Facebook and we're going to ask Judge Burgess what it's like to be a judge. So the first question that we had is how long have you been a judge? Uh, nearly 18 years. 18 years. That's a full-time judge. And then I was, before that, I was what's called a recorder, which is part-time judge. So I was doing a few weeks a year sitting as a judge. Brilliant. And how did you become a judge in the first place? Well, I was a barrister first, um, and I was a barrister for quite a long time, and obviously it's, it's a career choice, you can go on to become a judge, and I thought that it would suit me, and I applied to be what was then called an assistant recorder, and I had to fill in a form, and I was interviewed, and I was made an assistant recorder, and then I was made a recorder, and then I had to apply again to be a judge, get referees, um, be interviewed, fill in a form, saying why. <laughs> I thought I'd be a good judge. It's more complicated now because people actually had to take exams and do role play right. and that sort of thing. So. Oh wow, so a while ago but much different in that Yes, I, I, I think that they've tried to make it more inclusive, um, they've tried to make it more open uh, and yes, whereas in the old days it was, it was rather less formal than it is now. I see, lovely. And if you could summarise, what does a judge do? Well, there are lots of different sorts of judges. I'm a Crown Court judge, so I specialise in criminal work. There are judges who deal with tribunals, immigration tribunals and, and that sort of thing. And then there are the judges uh, in the High Court who may be doing lots of different type of work and County Court judges who will do family work, they'll do negligence claims, breach of contract, housing, Landlord and tenant, things like that. But I specialise in crime, so I'm doing criminal work of all sorts. Lovely. And this is a question that we had from Facebook. So uh, one gentleman wanted to know what are the wigs for? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Well, the wigs uh, were part of the fashion, I suppose, in the 17th century. Um, well to do people or people who wanted to look well to do had wigs of different quality and barristers had them, judges had them and they differentiated between the two and we're the only people who have hung on to them as, <laughs> as a fashion. Kept them as a fashion. Yeah, it, it actually serves quite a useful purpose I think because when we're up there sitting on the judge's bench we represent the state, we represent the Queen, the Queen's judges and, and if we wear a kind of uniform then we're not just John Burgess or Jessica Sims or whoever it might be. Um, we represent the country, the Queen and the law. Uh, and I think people over the years have got to expect that judges look like judges wearing a wig and barristers look like barristers wearing a gown and a wig. Uh, and I, I think that makes what we do more acceptable. To the public. It's also quite a good disguise because um, I've, I've done a case many years ago now in, in Leicester in fact where I sent a man to prison for seven years for robbery and I went out to do some shopping at lunchtime and I found myself walking almost in the middle of a group of people who were his family. I recognised right. them from the court um, at, but they didn't recognise me at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's without the lengths that's it. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I see. So no, it's I, you know, I wear a short wig in court. The, yes. the long wig is just for ceremony. Ceremonial, right. Yeah. Okay, that was kind of my next question in terms of do the lengths mean different things? Uh, the, the, the long wigs are for ceremonial. Okay. We wear what's called a bench wig in court, which is a bit more comfortable. Brilliant. Not much more comfortable, but a bit more comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Better than the long ones, yeah. lovely. So the next one ties in quite nicely with Justice Week, yeah. um, where we're trying to get more young people engaged with the law. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you give to someone who is looking to have a career in law? Well, um, find out about it first of all. Um, do the sort of things that you can do here at the Justice Museum. Um, there are some very good programmes around. Um, for I've just had a group of students from an organisation called Pathways to Law. Do you know about Pathways to Law? No. no but it's, it's great. It's run by the Sutton Trust. It uh, offers students from state schools the opportunity to find out whether they like 
or might be interested in a, a career in the law. And it's a two-year programme. I can't remember how many days they do. I think it's about 14 over, over the two-year period. Um, they've just spent, six of them have just spent two days at the Crown Court watching what we do, talking to judges and finding out about it. Brilliant. They have a two-day residential course at Warwick University where they get lectures and they have seminars and things like that. Uh, they visit um, at the Inner Temple, which is one of the Inns of Court for Barristers. I think they go to the Royal Courts of Justice as well that day. They have uh, sessions on uh, negotiation, things like that. Uh, and I think they've just had a, a, a mock trial exercise, which they did as well. And at the end, they have a little graduation ceremony, and parents are invited. And it's great, because you can see these students, um, their confidence developing over the time that they do it. And some don't, go, you know, don't want to go into the law. They've decided that it's interesting, but not for them. Yeah. But for others, they think, right, this is, this is great. And I think that it gives them a real insight into the sort of work that is available. So that's one way of doing it. But there, there are lots of other ways as well. Um, you, know, you need to do a bit of research to find out whether it is for you. Because unfortunately, these days, to qualify as a lawyer, whether it's a solicitor or a barrister, it's a very expensive process student loans, um, university fees, and then if you're going on to become a barrister or a solicitor, you've then got um, the fees of the college that you do your quali qualification at. Yeah. Um, you, there are scholarships available, and the Inns of Court provide scholarships, which is great. Uh, and some firms of solicitors and some chambers, sets of chambers offer assistance to really talented, clever people. Um, to, to help with that, but unfortunately, it's much more expensive than it was when I qualified. Yeah, so I suppose education as a whole um, really is so. Uh, well, friends and colleagues of mine, even today, my contemporaries, uh, not only didn't have to pay any tuition fees, either for the university or for the legal qualification, bar, bar finals as it was called then, but they actually got a subsistence grant. They got the local right. authority, local education authority, gave them a grant. Wow. Changes. I know, I know, I know, I know, I feel guilty. Well, I, well, I do, I feel guilty. Yeah. But that's, you know, it was so easy, well, not easy, but it was so much easier for us yeah. than, it, than it is. And it takes really dedicated people um, to, to qualify and then find a place either in a firm solicitor's or in a barrister's chambers. Thank you. And finally, the last question that we have for you is, what is your favourite part of the job? Right. Um, I think that's quite an easy question for me to answer, uh, although there, there is something else as well. But one of the things we do, uh, or it's an option for us to pass a sentence which involves what's called a drug rehabilitation requirement. And that can be part either of a suspended sentence or a community order. And a requirement of the, com of the drug rehabilitation requirement is that the defendant come back once a month the judge to review how that person is doing. And it doesn't work for everybody. Some people stay on the drugs uh, and don't get better. But others make real progress. And as the months go by, month on month, as they keep coming up, you can see the improvement in them physically and emotionally. Their mental health gets better. They get a job. And you come to the end of the year or the 18 months or whatever it might be, and they're off the drugs. They're clean they've got a job and they're so proud of themselves and uh, it allows us to shake their hand and congratulate them and that's the most satisfying bit of the day yeah. uh, and, and sometimes the week but one of the other things that I'm really keen on is getting to do stuff like this because we are encouraging students to come down to the Crown Court and with the National Justice Museum we've got this system working whereby people come to visit you and then you bring them down to see us and having seen a fantastic old Victorian court like this uh, and done role play and mock trials in, in here they come down and they see a modern court working with screens and yeah. all, all sorts of new technology uh, and they get a chance to ask people like me questions like the ones I'm, I'm answering now. Yeah, and it's funny because a lot of the children that, or children and young people that come here, mm. 
they sort of still see courts as being like this mm -hmm. one, um, yeah. very Victorian and very archaic, whereas I think it surprises a lot of them when they come down and they see that it is, the court. yeah, it's a lot more mm -hmm. with it now, and yeah. there's a lot more provisions in place actually to make it a better experience yeah. for everybody and a nicer experience for people. Yeah. Even, even the courts down the road though, call them modern, they were built in the 80s. And it was before we had things like video links. Yeah. It was before people were really using computers in court, and so they've had to be adapted as well. But um, I have worked at Lincoln Crown Court, which is much more like this, and getting the technology fitted in there is, is quite a challenge. Yeah, I can only imagine in a building like yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Well, that's all the questions that we've got for you. Good. So thank, thank you, you very much for coming no, along. Thank, thank you for inviting us, Jessica. Thank you. And if you are watching this, then you can follow us next week on Twitter, where we'll be looking at Justice Week and encouraging you to take part in the themes of the day. So thank you.